done three third-party SSD installation videos on my channel, and this is the second install for the M4 Mac Mini Pro in particular. Now this is the second generation of the third-party SSDs. So we're gonna go ahead and install this four terabyte drive, and later on in the video, I'll tell you the key difference between the second generation and the first. YouTube, welcome to Geek Shh. So full disclosure, this unit was sent to me by m4boosthub.com. Once again, that's m4boosthub.com. I will not be showing them my video before it goes live on my channel, and I also will not be catering my opinions to suit their needs. So in the box, we have the four terabyte SSD, a manual and a toolkit, which I really appreciate because this is the first install that I've done where I only need to use what was in the box due to the quality of the tools provided by the company. Now, the reason you might want to do this is simply the savings. Apple would charge you over a gram for a four terabyte SSD. So if you go this route, you'll save close to 500 bucks. Now, before we proceed with the installation, first, we got to do a few things on our M4 Mac Mini Pro. All right, guys, so let's start things off by doing a Blackmagic disk speed test. We're gonna do a five gig disk speed test. Now, remember, I'm not doing, I'm not going from the OEM over to, we're gonna choose desktop. Remember, I'm not going from the OEM over to the third party SSD. I'm going from the first generation of the third party SSD to the second generation of the third party SSD. So I get pretty high speeds already. All right, so as you can see right here, I'm on two terabytes. So we did 6,600 megabytes per second on the right and 5,400 megabytes per second on the read. All right, so that's pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do a transfer test so we could pay attention to how long it takes and also the temperature of the SSD. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a custom. Let me see, I'm gonna put this on let me see, I'm gonna put this on a constant value. Let's go like, what, 1500? So we can go ahead and do a comparison when I put the new one in. All right, so now it's at 1500 constant value. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and transfer over this folder, which is about 572 gigs. I'm gonna transfer it from the external drive over to the internal drive. All right, let's go ahead and get things started. All right, so that took about two minutes and 19 seconds. And you, as you can see, it got up to about 85 degrees Celsius. Now, before we do the install, you wanna go ahead and sign out of your iCloud account. This is very important. So there's no type of conflicts between the old SSD and the new one. Then after that, if you want to, you could go ahead and do your time machine backup. All right, now let's go ahead and do our install. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. So first thing first, what you need to do is you wanna bring out your little, whatever this is, and you wanna go across from the power button. So we're gonna go like right here. All right, and what we also wanna pull out is this little, whatever this is, this little shimmy. All right, now we what we wanna do is stick it on here, and we just wanna pull up so we can just get a little bit of space. And that was easy. So once we got that, we could just pull that back. Now we're gonna pull out the plastic crowbar. All right, and with the plastic crowbar, you just wanna go, you wanna go around and just pop these little, these little tabs here. All right, so we got that one. Pop this plastic tab. All right, and we got that one and we don't need this no more. And we just wanna go right here and, plat and pop this last one. All right, and be careful because right here is where the wire is. Right here is where the wire is, so you wanna be very careful, as you can see right there. Now you do not need to unplug this wire. Do not listen to people when they tell you <laughs> to unplug that. You're just gonna give yourself another point of failure when you don't need to. All right, so now what we need to pull out is, I forgot the sizes. All right, so right here is T5. Perfect. 
And now we should just be pulling this up. So you want to lift up the front part over here on this side and then pull it towards you. Then it should just come up. All right, now be careful with this one as well. So because it's a wire attached to it as well. As you can see right here, there you go to the, the cable fan that's attached to it. So you, you want to be very careful with that as well. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to unscrew the fan. So now we're going to go to T3. I really like this kit that they gave it this time, man. I'm not going to lie to you. This is a very good kit. Make things way easier. These are two T3 screws over here. All right. All right. Now what we want to do is, uh, oh, we got to take out the, the screw for the fan. So now we're going to switch to the T5 again. All right. Now we can lift up the fan. Now, you don't have to pull out the fan. You can just push it to the side. All right. Now, as you can see right there, that's the first generation. This is the one that's on the box. Right. This is the first generation. As you can see, I put a thermal pad on there in a previous video, and that thermal pad really helped it out a lot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to T8. Right. Switch to the T8. and pull out this screw. And it's magnetic too. So that's that's a good thing as well. It's already magnetic. So they really did a good job. When I see stuff like that, I really appreciate that. Shout out to the company that sent this. Pull this back. All right. And got it out. And this third this little third party this little uh thermal pad that I put on here this thing is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. As you can see, it's stuck to it, too. It is not a situation where it fell off and it did a real good job. I'll tell you it's true. All right. As you can see, this is the first generation third party SSD. The front of the third party SSD first generation. And this is the second generation. Now, the second generation is more more like the OEM. Matter of fact, let me go get my OEM because I kept it. So we could definitely see the difference between those. So let me put, flip this over. All right. The back had nothing on it. And then when you flip this one over, I think this is the flipped over side. <laughs> this has nothing on it as well. Well, this, this one has, when you flip this one over, this one has SSDs on both sides. NAND chips on both sides. Now, at first when I spoke to them, they said they didn't have any th this cover over it. Now, what this cover is is a is a this is a thermal pad. This is the same thing that you find on the OEM. This is a thermal pad to help keep it cool, right? All right. So here's the OEM, the front side. This is the third-party SSD. This is the third party SSD. Now let's switch it over. Here's the OEM. And here's the third party SSD. All right, combine them. Just put it in the ridge. It's a little slot. You'll know where it go because there'll be like a little arrow there that you can see and you can put it in. All right, now that's in. So now this starts off with eight, the T8. All right, secure that in. Now move the fan where it needs to go. All right, now these bottom two are T5s. 
and the top is the T3. All right, now we're gonna put this back on top. Just put it in here and it slides in a little bit. All right, now we're gonna switch to the T5 again. We got everything screwed in. Don't forget this screw over here is kind of hidden. All right, now let's just connect everything back. Snap everything back into place. All right, now let's just do a little visual inspection. Let's just do a little visual inspection. Everything looks good. All right, guys, so first thing first, you wanna put the USB, plug the USB cable in, and you wanna plug it into the middle port, which is the one with the Thunderbolt symbol. Don't use the left or the right. Make sure you use the middle. All right, now you have the HDMI that I'm gonna plug in. All right, and last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in an ethernet cable. Okay, and and the last cable we're gonna plug in, last cable we're gonna plug in is the power cable. But when I plug in the power cable, I'm gonna hold the power button. So we're gonna press, we're gonna press and hold the power button as we plug in the power cable. So pressing it, and this should light up amber. All right, now it's lighting up amber, as you can see. All right, now on my MacBook, my M1 MacBook, I'm gonna click allow. All right, now you can, all right, now we see DFU mode here. All right, and we wanna go ahead and click restore Mac. Oh, a software update. Go ahead and install it. I hope it's not taking me all the way to Tahoe though. I don't wanna be on Tahoe. All right, so we should still be flashing and we're still flashing Amber. Hope you guys can see that. All right, now let's go ahead and click restore. All right, so now we're gonna click restore and update. Are you sure you wanna restore Mac to its factory settings? All of your data will be erased and the newest version of Mac OS will be installed. All right.
All right, so it says the connected Mac has been restored to factory second settings. Please disconnect the restored Mac from this Mac. All right, so let's go ahead and disconnect that one. All right, so they forced me to go to Tahoe, which I don't wanna be on, so I'll downgrade later on. But nonetheless, go ahead and go through the setup process. You could go ahead and do your time machine restore if you did a time machine backup. Then eventually when you get on the desktop, you go to disk utility and you should see four terabytes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and downgrade back to Sequoia and then we're going to run the speed test again. Let's go ahead and do a magic disk speed test on the internal drive. Let's go ahead and let's go do desktop. Let's go ahead and get that started. As you can see, we're at 6,900 megabytes per second on the right and 5,400 megabytes per second on the read. 6,900 again, and then 5,300 megabytes per second on the read again. All right, so just like the last video, we have it at constant value of 1,500. So we could directly compare the second generation to the first generation of the third party SSD. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go over to this folder that we used on the last one, which is 572 gigs. And we're gonna go ahead and transfer it over to the internal SSD. Let me go ahead and hit start. All right, guys, so you saw it for yourself. It The highest it got to was 72 degrees. And I believe the first generation got up to about 80 degrees, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the difference between those two right there. So there's many differences between the first generation and the second. But the key difference between the two fixes a problem that I highlighted in a video on my channel. The first generation third-party SSDs stopped auto fan controller from working which is the default fan control of the M4 Mac Mini, both pro and non-pro. Now this is an easy fix. Please refer to my video on how to fix it for free. Now these second generation third-party SSDs do not have that problem. Once you do the installation, the default fan control continues to work without a hiccup. Now this may be due to them having a 10 layer PCB. Now what that really means is beyond my scope of understanding. So I reached out to them and asked them about it. And this was their response. And I quote, it's a multi-layer circuit board that has 10 copper layers separated by dielectric. In high-speed designs, a typical 10-layer stack places dedicated ground and power planes. Hey, this is too technical for me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. All I know is that it fixes the problem that the first generations of the third-party SSDs have. You know what I mean? Now, in the description will be a link to where you could purchase this as well as a 8% discount code for you as well. Now, my name is DeMarco Payne for Geeksh. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And last but not least, may the ability to understand super technical explanations be yours. <laughs> the man said EMI control. What is that? <laughs>